This video will be on the DQ0 transform with the HBM eDrive power analyzer. In my last video, I showed the space vector transform and its use for understanding motor control. And the next natural step is to go through the DQ0 transform. For those not acquainted with space vector DQ0, um, space vector is a way of taking three phases and making it two phases so that we can visualize things and understand them because humans are good at understanding things in two dimensions much more than three. Um, DQ0 is a space vector transform that has a reference frame change. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're spinning at a certain speed with the goal of actually viewing the three phase measurements as DC measurements um, so that we can feed them back to a controller. So first I'm going to go through some theory with uh, some corny animations and then we're going to show some data that was taken with the eDrive power analyzer. Um, so I'll jump into the corny animations. So starting off with the stationary reference frame. So here I have a guy sitting at a fixed point looking at the electrical stator signals. So since he's sitting at a fixed point, um, he's seeing the electrical go by him at line frequency. Uh, so he's seeing those peaks and valleys. Um, and for this measurement, you only need the electrical signals. You do not need any angle measurements. Um, but at the end of the day, it's the exact same as the space vector transform, so there's really no benefit to using the stationary reference frame um, of DQ0 beyond what you get with space vector transform. And we can see over here that in two electrical cycles of um, the stationary or of the, the stator current, we have two electrical cycles of the stationary DQ0. Um, so not a whole lot of use there. Next reference frame we'll look at is the rotor reference frame. So with this, I have a little guy sitting on the rotor. He is following the rotor looking at the stator currents. So we're going to follow the phase A current. Um, we're going to see that if we go through one full electrical cycle, um, we went through half a mechanical cycle, so we went from the top of the stator to the bottom of the stator. Um, and since we're viewing it, the electrical frequency from that, um, my guy saw half of a rotational DQ0 cycle. So the electrical cycles are moving at the same speed as the mechanical cycles in the rotor reference frame. Um, and then just to finish, if I go through my full cycle, in two electrical cycles, I had one mechanical cycle and one rotational DQ0 cycle. And for this measurement, we need um, three phase measurements as well as the uh, rotor angle measurement, which can be taken natively into the E-Drive. Um. Finally, we're going to look at the synchronous reference frame, which is probably the most useful of all of these, because it lets us see our signals in DC. So we can see our guy is now on the stator, and he is moving with the electrical currents. So he, he's just going along with the electrical current. Um, so in one current cycle, we, we didn't really see any change in our synchronous DQ0 because he was looking at the peak at the top of the uh, stator and he's looking at the peak 90 degrees, he's looking at the peak at 180 degrees, he's looking at the peak at 270 degrees, and same story, you know, he's looking at the peak when he's at the top of the, the viewing window. So we see that signal as DC um, despite there being two electrical uh, cycles and one mechanical cycle. So that gives us a lot of power for feeding back to a controller. And for this, we need the three phase measurements and then the electrical angle. Um, so now we'll jump into some data. If I can find my mouse. Ah, all right. So what we need to do the DQ0 transforms is we need some electrical measurements, uh, which we're you know, all well acquainted with, and then we need angles. So here I have some data um, that shows a control change for an electric machine. Um, it's just a lot more exciting than showing just static uh, set points um, in a video. So I'll use the same data I used for the space vector transform. Uh, for this, we're going to use the three phase currents in our DQ0 uh, calculations. Um, next, we need angle. So in the stationary reference frame, we insert zero angle. So that's not shown here because it would just be a static right across the middle. Um, I'm showing my electrical current just for reference. And then what I have in green is my uh, mechanical angle, which if you can see we reset right here. 
we pick up, we go through one electrical cycle, and then we go through two electrical cycles. And this is being taken from an ABZ encoder, which is read natively into our eDrive system. In yellow, I have my electrical angle. Um, so we can see here that we reset at the same time as the mechanical angle, and then we creep up, but we reset through after one cycle. So this guy is going to be used for our synchronous reference frame, and the green is going to be used for our rotor reference frame. Um, so now we'll look at some, some data after we've done the, the transforms. So here I'm showing my D and Q um, direct and quadrature measurements from the DQ0 transform for the stationary reference frame. Um, for those of you who remember my space vector transform, this is identical. Um, our line frequency is about 100 hertz, and these uh, sine waves are going at, you guessed it, 100 hertz. Um, pretty boring. We can still get our control uh, visualization out of it, but we're, we're not getting anything above and beyond that space vector transform. So next, we'll show some data using the rotor reference frame. I think the immediate thing we see is that we had that step down in frequency. So our rotor is spinning at about 50 hertz. And uh, again, you guessed it, um, our D and Q values are spinning at 50 hertz. Um, and what we can see here also is that we have double the frequency in this visualization. So what is this telling us anything useful? Uh, probably, if you really wanted to dig into it, uh, but, you know, for, for the everyday user who's just trying to do their job and not be academic, uh, this is probably not the most useful thing in the world. However, just for showing the understanding of the DQ0, we're at half the frequency, and we're calculating it using the um, mechanical angle. And then here, here's the one we're all excited about, um, at least I'm excited about, is our DQ0 using the synchronous reference frame. So we can see that these guys are almost, uh, almost DC. It's DC with a ripple. So that ripple is telling us information about our control. This is useful information we can pull out of this ripple here. Um, and then also, this is a static value. So we can feed it back to a comparator in a control system um, so we can change set points and respond more quickly to disturbances in our, in our system. So at the end of the day, this is allowing us to feed back for controls what we want. Um, now, since we're doing this with our, uh, our eDrive power analyzer, and your controller is doing this natively, um, we can actually live compare our DQ0 measurements on your machine to your controller's DQ0 measurements to make sure that uh, they're both doing what we expect them to. Um, you know, if your controller is acting on some signals, uh, but those signals aren't actually what you're measuring, you, you might not be uh, operating at an optimal point. Um, we are calculating these live with eDrive, so in the onboard DSP of our system, uh, we're doing the calculations, and then we're streaming them out over EtherCAT, um, all in real time, so that you can take those measurements and do what you want with them um, in your, your dyno or your test system control. Um, so there's a lot of power in that. And I, I think this is kind of a fun measurement here, showing the, the control point change, um, getting back to the, to the DQ0. So if I zoom out, um, I can play this back. So we play it back, we see we're at a fixed point. We're operating in that fixed point, um, and then we're coming up on our control change, and we see that we move to a new operating point, and we're operating in this cyclical um, area. And, you know, when, when we go back to the data, I, I think we all saw that... Um, there's a lot of, lot of movement around here, and that's because we changed from a nice PWM to a uh, six-step control. Um, and that's why we see that movement. So I think there's a lot of power just in understanding from seeing that as well. Um, and then as a straight comparison, on top here, I have alpha and beta from our space vector, which is identical to our stationary DQ0. Um, and then we go to our rotor reference frame, which is, again, half the frequency of the stationary, because this is at line frequency, this is at rotor speed, and then if we come down where we're following that sine wave around the rotor, we see it as DC, and then we see it as DC with, with some ripple, um, which you know that this is going to be wonky going into a controller, which means it's going to be wonky coming out, and in all of these we see a lot of disturbance. Um, 
And then because I, I think it's interesting and fun to correlate all of these back together, um, I have plotted our three different DQ0 transforms against our six-step PWM voltage, um, which is in blue. And we can see that all of these points all correlate to a hard switch in our inverter. Um, and I just think this is cool to, you know, you see all those points shifting at the exact same time. Um, so they are all correlated. At the end of the day, we're measuring the same quantity of, with each of these. We're just looking at it from a different perspective. Um, so I'll give you guys some food for thought on that. I, I've gone a little long here, but uh, if 10 minutes to go through DQ0 is definitely not enough. Um, so if you have any questions or want to learn more about how we handle this with our eDrive system, please let me know. Uh, my 